Do you want to learn how to check blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate, pain intensity, and body temperature? Because today, I will be teaching you 10 steps on how to check vital signs. Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I am Dodivic Arma, a physical therapy student in the Philippines, and I am your therapeutic master. So, let's start by asking what are vital signs? It is a collective term that serves as indicators of the body's physiological status and of course responds to physical activity, environmental conditions, and emotional stressors. Vital signs are also called cardinal signs. These are measurements of our body's most basic functions. Originally, we have four vital signs. We have blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate, and body temperature. But now, we have what we call the fifth vital sign, which is the pain intensity. So, step number one, prepare and gather your equipment and supplies. You will need a stethoscope, a blood pressure cuff, or a sphygmomanometer, watch, digital thermometer, an alcohol, and a disinfectant wipe. Step number two, perform hand hygiene technique with alcohol-based formulator or like water and sabon. But why do we need na maghugas ng kamay? It's because we want to prevent the spread of bacteria or viruses and we do not want to do any harm to our patient. According to the World Health Organization, we need to follow the five moments for hand hygiene. Number one, before touching a patient. Number two, before a clean or a septic procedure. Number three, after a body fluid exposure. Number four, after touching the patient. And number five, after touching the patient's surroundings. Step number three, clean your equipment. Step number four, establish rapport to your patient. Just like this. Hi sir, magandang araw po. Ako po si Dodivic Arma, ang physical therapist niyo po today. At ang gagawin po natin, kukunin ko po yung vital signs niyo sir. Okay lang po ba sir? Okay lang. Sige sir. Pero bagong lahat, gusto ko muna ipakayara sa inyo guys. This is my favorite father in the world, Papa Samuel Arman. He volunteered to be my patient for today. E welcome po natin siya guys. Hi guys. <laughs> Actually, in physical therapy, we always practice how to establish rapport to our patient. It's one of the most important things we need to do because we want to make sure that we have gained the trust of our patient. We have to make sure that our patient is comfortable talking to us. Because by doing so, mas madali na lang namin makukuha lahat ng mga information na kailangan when it comes to history taking and assessment. And when it comes to taking the vital signs, Nakakatulong siya kasi mas napapakalma natin yung patient natin and then hindi ma-alter ang result ng kanyang heart rate, respiratory rate, blood pressure, temperature kasi hindi na siya kinakabahan. He's comfortable talking to us na. And speaking of hindi kinakabahan, our step number five is give your patient a five minute time to rest. Always remember to give your patient time to rest to make sure that he is not running out of breath when you're taking his vital signs. Kasi maraming mga patient, kapag dumarating sa clinic natin, pagod sila. Kasi they traveled for like malayo pa and then... <laughs> Maybe your clinic is located at the second floor. So they have to uh, use the stairs. And then mapapagod sila. So you have to give them time to relax to ensure the accurate measurement of their vital signs. Step number six, start with the easiest thing to do, which is pain rating. You might be wondering why pain is included in the vital signs. It is because a normal response to pain is an increase in blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate, and that means pain can alter vital signs. But since pain is subjective. In physical therapy, we use the numeric pain rating scale or visual analog scale or the McKeel pain questionnaires in order to assess pain. And now we will use the numeric pain rating scale. So sir, tanong ko lang po sir, 
may nararamdaman ka pong sakit, so pwede mo pong i-grade from 0 to 10. So, 0, wala kayong nararamdaman at all, to 10, na pinakagrabing masakit na nararamdaman mo ngayon, sir. So, nasaan doon yung level ng masakit, sir? 4. Okay. So, since our patient answered 4, we continue to ask open-ended questions like this. So, sir, pwede mo bang i-point sa akin kung saan na part yung masakit? Dito. Sa likod. Tanong ko lang ulit, sir, kung anong klase ng masakit, kung nanonood po ba, sir, or parang gumagapang, or parang tinutusok, or parang kinokuryente, o baka naman po nasa ilalim po yung masakit? Nasa ilalim po yung masakit. Okay, sir. Sige po. So, as you can observe, we don't need to use medical term when we are asking questions to our patient. We have to make sure that our patient is able to understand our question so that we'll be able to get the correct answer based on what they actually feel. Step number seven, take the body temperature. But there are different factors affecting our body temperature. And so it is important to remember that a range of values such as this is more representative of a normal temperature. What are those factors? We have time of the day, age, stress, exercise, menstrual cycle, pregnancy, and measurement sites. Speaking of measurement sites, we have rectal and tympanic membrane temperature, which is the most accurate site that gives a normal value of 37.5 degrees Celsius. We also have oral temperature with a normative value of 37 degrees Celsius and axillary temperature of 36.4 degrees Celsius. But now, we will use a digital thermometer for axillary temperature. So sir, pakilagay po sa kilikili niyo, sir. Okay, after a few minutes, pwede natin tingnan ang result ng kanyang body temperature. Step number eight, get the heart rate. First thing to do is to find a pulse site which can be found at the different parts of our body. We have the temporal over here. We have the carotid over here. Then we have the brachial here. And then we have the radial over here. We also have the femoral, the popliteal, and the dorsal spinous at the lower extremity. But for now, we will use the radial pulse. Then we need to give attention to three things, the rate, the rhythm, and the quality. Normal heart rate is 60 to 100 beats per minute. Less than 60 beats per minute is what we call bradycardia, and greater than 100 beats per minute is what we call tachycardia. Then, rhythm is the pattern of pulsation and interval between them. They can only be regular and irregular. Irregular if the pulsations are not evenly spaced. Next is quality, which we can document through a grading scale. Here's our scale for grading pulse quality. We have 0, absent, 1 plus thready, 2 plus weak, 3 plus normal, 4 plus bounding. In taking the patient's heart rate, we have to use two fingertips, our index finger and our middle finger. We cannot use our thumb because there's actually pulse there. Place your two fingertips on the radial artery here not very hard or else the artery will occlude so you have to take that for at least one minute and then take note of the rate rhythm and quality so after that you have to document the result just like this we will move his forearm across his chest and then place our fingers on the radial artery as if we are still measuring his heart rate. And then we have to place our other hand on the back of our patient. Because if we are going to tell our patient that we are measuring his respiratory rate, what will happen is he will gonna alter his breathing. And that's for our step number eight. Check the respiratory rate. And the normal respiratory rate is 12 to 20 cycle per minute. And that means one inhalation and one exhalation is equal to one cycle. Then, we also look for the depth. 
and that can only be done by checking for the use of accessory muscles and the movement of the chest. And that's the reason why I moved our patient's forearm across his chest and my other hand on the back of my patient in order to check for deep or shallow breathing. And we also check for the rhythm. Is it regular or irregular? To do it again, you need to count for 30 seconds. That means the patient has a regular rhythm and you have to multiply it by two. However, if you found any irregularities, you have to count for 60 seconds. And then after that, you have to document the result just like this. And lastly, step number nine, get the blood pressure. So first thing we need to do is we have to make sure that our patient is sitting comfortably with forearm on the table at the level of the heart. But what are the things we need in order to take the blood pressure? So we have stethoscope, and then we have the sphygmo manometer. Then we should ask our patient questions like this. Sir, kailan ka po last na nagpa-BP, sir? Six months. Six months. Ano po yung blood pressure niyo noon, sir? 10 over 50. Okay. So we need those questions because it will serve as our baseline in getting his blood pressure now. Next thing we need to do is to locate the brachial artery. It's over here at the elbow. It's inside, closest to the chest of the patient. Then after locating, you have to put on the blood pressure cuff. Just make sure that the arrow here is pointing the brachial artery that you have located earlier. So, sige sir, relax. Then make sure that the blood pressure cuff is 2 to 3 inches above the elbow. And then use two fingers in order to make sure that it's not too tight or too loose. Close the air valve by twisting it to the right or in clockwise direction so that air actually pumps to the blood pressure cuff. And then double check your stethoscope. Make sure it is on by tapping on the diaphragm. And then you should hold your diaphragm like this using your uh, index finger and your middle finger to make sure that you are not mishearing your own pulse. And then place it on the brachial artery. So inflate the blood pressure cuff up to 180 to 200 mmHg. And then deflate it by 2 mmHg. Always take note of the first rhythmic tapping sound that you hear, and that's what we call the systolic pressure, as well as the last sound, that's the diastolic pressure. And then, document the result just like this. Then, here is our blood pressure classification. Normal is less than 120 over less than 80. Prehypertension is within 120 to 139 over 80 to 89. Stage 1 hypertension is 140 to 159 over 90 to 99. And stage 2 hypertension is greater than or equal to 160 over greater than or equal to 100. That's all po sir. Thank you po for your participation. Again guys, this is my father, Samuel Arma. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations! That's it for our vlog. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the post notification. And if you have anything to recommend for our next video and our next vlog, please don't forget to comment down below. Comment. <laughs> to comment down below. Goodbye. See you in my next vlog.